392 game, man. What's going on, man? Back at it again with another video. If you're just not tuned in to the channel, man, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn that bell on at the top. That way you'll get notified every time I drop a video. Y'all already know what I'm about to say next, man. Go ahead. Don't forget to watch them ads, man. Yes, sir. But look, man, today, man, I'm, I'm kind of pissed off, bro. Like, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Hold on, man. Because I'm, I'm, I'm cooking at the same time, too, man. You know, let me show y'all what I'm cooking, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Got some chicken bread going on right there. I'm going to make some chicken salad, man. Got your light mayonnaise, you know what I'm saying? Got the almonds, you know what I'm saying? That's just a snack. Got some weed crackers, little relish. I'm about to whip it up, you know what I'm saying? But that ain't what the video gonna be about, man. This video is about Dodge. Let me set this up somewhere, man. There's some good light going on right there, man. All right. So look, man, I know a lot of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me talk to y'all for a minute, man. Hold on. So... All right, so let me, I'm going to just start, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people have been victims of car theft. Like, as far as, like, you know what I'm saying? Hair cats getting stolen, you know, yada, yada. And I asked myself, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? How does, how does, a, you know, well, any car can get stolen, but you pay all this money for a car, right? Scat pad, 392, Hellcat, whatever, whatever. You pay all this money for the car. So if I'm paying all this money for a car, I expect the the manufacturer to, you know, securitize that vehicle as best as they can. So I'm pretty sure everybody already aware that, you know, hey, well, if you got a Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, whatever, 392. If if you bust the back windows out of these cars, the alarm is not gonna go off. Alright. First I didn't know that. So I'm like, well dang. Is that true? So you know me, I don't like taking nobody's word for it. So I did my own research and looked up Dodge forms and you know. It's actually true, like, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of people are becoming victims of theft if they don't have an um, a aftermarket alarm on their vehicle. You know what I'm saying? So, it almost makes you question, like, well, do I really want to <clears throat> buy this vehicle or have this vehicle if anybody can steal it without my knowledge? Like, Perfect example, in Atlanta, you know, a lot of Hellcats and stuff was being st stolen from people, properties, dealerships, even when the, um, the Minneapolis thing, you know, uh, when they was doing the riots and stuff, a lot of demons, Hellcats and stuff like that was being stolen off the dealership. Well, the only thing these cats doing, man, they busting the back windows, going in, and they unlocking it. I mean, they 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 hot wiring it, but they unlocking it from the back window when they when they bust it out. And my thing is that that's stupid. Like, why would you make a a five hundred horsepower and up car and only make it so that if the front windows are bust, then the alarm goes off, not the back window, but only the front. Like to me, that's that's like the stupidest thing ever. Like I, I just don't get what was going through the engineer's mind when they made Dodge and they made not made Dodge when they made these cars. Like, if you putting all this horsepower and luxury into this car, why not have the alarm go off if all the windows are buzzed? Like, me personally, I just don't I don't think they 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 thought that one through. Like that's just that's just dumb. That's stupid. And so that's that's one thing that concerns me. So a lot of people, including myself, um, I had to get an uh, aftermarket alarm. So now, you know, if anything on my car is touched, if you bump my car too hard, the alarm gonna go off. You feel what I'm saying? If you touch any window or anything, the alarm gonna go off. So, you know, me personally, I went and got an aftermarket alarm just because of the sense, like, what Dodge did was stupid on that. So I encourage you, you got a Mopar, uh, 15 and up, 
and you know, well, I don't even know, I don't even know if it applies to you know the older model SRT8s. Um, but I'm pretty sure it does. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I encourage you to go get an aftermarket alarm, man, because like I said, they can bust the back windows of these cars, and you know it's gone. You know that's what insurance for, but still, you know. So that was the first thing that kind of made me iffy about Dodge, man. But at this point, I already got the car, so I was like, mm, all right, I'll just get an aftermarket alarm. So that's what I did. The second thing, man, this started. This probably started like a couple weeks ago. Um, I noticed that my my Uconnect screen, you know, started you know going haywire. Like it'll uh, just touch whatever it want to touch. It'll just be it'll jump from this screen to that screen. It'll hit that button. It hit this button. You know, you turn it on Bluetooth. It'll hop over to radio. It'll hop over like it just it just be bouncing all over the place. Now, mind you, if you go back to my video, um. It was a couple of videos back, but I took my I took my car to the dealership a while back to get my screen looked at again because you know I was having an issue with my screen still. Um, what was it doing? Uh, it'll just freeze, like you know. Um, sometimes I turn my car on in the morning or whenever I turn it on, man, and um, it'll just um, make this loud buzzing sound like. It just freeze and I won't touch nothing and then I can't I, I'm not like I'm not able to touch anything so I would literally have, even if you turn the car off open the door whatever the screen will still be froze and the sound will still go on so it literally just does that for like a good five to seven minutes so you know whatever volume that you have your volume set it that's the loud like that's how loud it's gonna be or whatever so eventually it ends up resetting itself and you know, that's that. But it happens quite frequently. So I took my car to the dealership and you know, told them the issue. They had my car overnight. They said that my um, my Uconnect had to be updated. So they updated my screen. At least that's what they said. They told me they updated my screen and they assured me that the problem was fixed. So I'm like, okay, so I didn't have that problem again after that. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe it is fixed. Now, a couple weeks ago, like I said, I started noticing this issue. Like I'm just, just uh, first, it, it first started when I was I was driving down and I, every time I drive or do some hard pulls in Mexico or whatever, I, I always turn on my uh, performance pages and look at my, um, my gauges. You know what I'm saying? Make sure all my temperatures and, you know, everything is fine as far as gauge wise. So this particular time I was looking at my uh, my air intake temperature gauge as I was cruising because I had just changed out some stuff on my intake. So I was you know doing a little, few test pulls trying to see what was what. And uh, I noticed that it hopped back to the home screen on the SRT page. So I was like, okay, maybe I touched something on the state. You know, let me put it back. So I put it back on the screen and I rolled down to like another light and it just jumped back again. So I'm like, all right, no, I know I didn't do that. So. I was like, all right, let me try another screen. So I, I went back to my radio screen on the media, listened to my radio, Bluetooth. Then it jumped right to the USB. So I'm like, all right, something going on. So all right, let me try radio. So I put it on the radio, it was an FM, gold, and it just jumped to AM. I go to the performance page, it jumped to, it just jumped, like it do whatever it wanna do. So I'm like, all right, now we have a problem. So I pulled my, um, my I, I I pulled my radio fuse out, um, and I tried to I let it reset. Boom, put it back in. And if you got a U a U connect, if you touch the upper right corner of the screen and hold it for like 10, 15 seconds, it'll automatically do a soft reset. Did that, unhooked the battery for like 15 minutes, reconnected it or whatever. I unmarried the taser. I retased the car. None of that worked. So I called up a couple buddies of mine who, you know, also have 392s and they were saying that, you know, oh, they was experiencing the same problem. They told them, they told me that they had to take it to the dealership, but the, the dealership told them that, you know, well, they're aware of the issue, uh, but Dodge isn't going to cover it. So I'm like, whoa, wait, what? Now, mind you, my car is still under... 
factory warranty because I only got 30,000 miles in my car. So I got a 17, 2017. So, you know, my car is still in the factory warranty. So I'm like, why wouldn't they cover it if it's a known issue? So he told me that they told him that it was going to cost $1,400 for a new screen because with our radios, man, that those those you connect control so much. They they basically control the whole car. You know, the power, the gauges, the radio, the this, the that, the camera, the, like it controls so much. So my thing is, if Dodge is aware, and then I I said, nah, man, they I'm saying to myself, they, they couldn't have told you this. So I called the dealership myself. And the guy was like, well, yeah. We've been having radio issues with these cars for like the past three years. So I'm like, okay. I mean, he told me that out of his own mouth. So I'm like, man, there's no way that, you know, these people are aware of the issue. So they told him that, you know, no update or anything that you can do can fix that issue. That basically the screen is just bad. And you would have to get another screen. And they told him that the screen would cost around $1,400 plus labor. I'm like, man, that's ridiculous. So normally, if any company or manu manufacturer, should I say, you know, is aware of a, a issue like that that they're having with their parts, they're gonna issue a recall. And you just get another part for free, swapped out, simple as plain. Like, that's just great customer service. So my thing is, like, Dodge, man, like, I love Dodge. This has always been my dream car to have a 392. And I finally got it, man, and I've, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the power, I've been enjoying the mods. But it's just like, if you're messing up on your end and you're not giving me the customer service that I deserve and expect, then, you know, why should I stay with you? You dig what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't know, man. So I called the dealership. You know, they told me I can drop my car. They kind of backed up. So it's probably going to be like, you know, a couple of days before I can get it back. And boot and boot. The guy was like, well, yeah, there's so many parts that, you know, that can, you know, you know, can have the, the uh, so many variables that could cause the issue of what's going on. So he was just like, you know, you can bring your car by and drop it off. And, you know what I'm saying, we can take a look at it for you and, and, and diagnose it, diagnost, diagnostic the car or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And see what's going on. So I'm like, well, I'll do that, man. But, you know, I just feel like, you know, if this is a, a factory malfunction from a factory part, that you in the factory are aware of why should the customer have to pay for a new part that's defective on your end? I don't get that. So I don't know if it was just particularly the dealership that he went to. You dig what I'm saying? That gave him that information, but we're going to see, man. But, you know, I just don't know, man. Like, I don't want to leave Dodge because, like I said, I've always wanted this 392. You know, I've always loved... Who's this calling me? I don't know who this is calling me. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. But, um, but yeah, man. So, you know, like I said, man, this always been my car I wanted. Hopefully, um, when I drop my car off at the dealership, you know, they could issue me a new screen, man, without me having to pay for it because I just feel like that's crazy. I don't want to sell my car. I don't want to leave Dodge. But, you know, just thinking about, you know, uh, future things, man. Like, what if something else go wrong and they don't want to cover it? Like, you get know what I'm saying? It's just like, you're kind of juggling. Like, do I pay for it this time and take the risk of something else happening again? I got to do it again? Or do I just, you know, leave now while I'm ahead? You know, it's just one of those things. But I don't know, man. We're going to see. But, um... I'm probably going to drop my car off in the morning, see what's going on, and uh, just pretty much kind of like go from there. Um, but if not, I don't know. But I'll keep you guys posted. And uh, I don't know, man. Like I, like I said, I'm going to drop my car off in the morning or whatever. And I'm going to, uh, you know, just pretty much see what happens from there. But uh, hopefully... You know, the dealership I go to tell me something different and <clears throat> they actually, you know, fix my car for free as they should. Um, and I ain't got to deal with this 
no more. But you know, we'll see, man. We'll see. But that's just something for y'all to think about, man. If you plan on buying a 392 or you got a 392 and you having the same issue, you know, let me know. Let me know you got a 392 and you having this issue and you know your experience was a little different or you found something else that worked that fixed the issue. Let me know, you know, and uh I keep y'all posted on what happened to Maxine. But uh I don't like that, man. I don't like the fact that they are aware of this issue. But like I said, it could just be the dealership that he talked to. And they told him that. So I'm not going to just judge just yet. I'm going to see what the dealership tell me first. And then pretty much go from there, man. So uh, this video, I just had to get that off my chest, man. Because that, that, that kind of like pissed me off when I, and yeah. But anyway, man, make sure y'all share this video, man. Um, somebody else might be having the same issue. You know, it's a little informative video. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, you know, and uh, stay on the lookout. We got some more stuff coming soon, man. Linking up with some folks from Atlanta again. That's another video coming soon, man. Uh, SRT Bree supposed to be having, uh, a, it's called Slime with SRT Bree. She's supposed to be having that on the 24th of July, but uh, she was saying due to that big shooting that just happened in Atlanta, this past weekend, they might cancel it. I'm not sure, but she said that she's supposed to make it a um a annual thing uh, every year that you get the whole city out and everybody just cruise and meet up and do that for the whole weekend. So I don't know, man, but stay tuned for that also. But um, other than that, man, it's going to wrap up this video, man. And we are out of here.